If you have been looking forward to ride a bullet train from New York to Miami, you may have to wait a very long time. The development of high-speed rail, commonly known as bullet trains, in the United States has been a topic of discussion for many years. However, the country has faced various challenges in implementing such projects. Some of the hindrances include Financial constraints High-speed rail requires a significant initial capital investment for tracks, stations, and rolling stock. In a country where automotive and air travel are already well established, justifying this expenditure can be difficult. Federal and state funding is often limited, and private investment is also challenging to secure given the long period required for a return on investment. Political and regulatory challenges. Rail projects often span multiple jurisdictions, requiring extensive coordination between local, state, and federal governments. Political opposition can stall or completely halt projects. The federalist system of the U.S. means that state governments have significant power in transport planning, leading to a lack of national coordination. Land acquisition. High-speed rail requires dedicated tracks that are straighter and flatter than conventional rail lines. Acquiring this land, particularly in densely populated or environmentally sensitive areas, can be costly and time-consuming. Competition from other modes of transport. The U.S. has a well-developed network of airlines and highways, which offer convenience and are deeply ingrained in the American lifestyle. This reduces the perceived necessity of a high-speed rail network. Technological challenges. Implementing high-speed rail involves not just laying down tracks but also installing advanced signaling and communication systems, and meeting stringent safety standards. This complexity adds to both the time and cost of these projects. Public perception and demand. For high-speed rail to be viable, there needs to be sufficient demand. In a country where car ownership is high and flights are relatively cheap, convincing the public to opt for train travel is an uphill task. Environmental concerns. Though trains are generally more energy efficient than planes or automobiles, construction projects of this magnitude do have environmental impacts that need to be assessed and mitigated, often causing delays. Why was it easier to build high-speed rail in China or France you may ask? The development of high-speed rail systems in countries like China and France was facilitated by a range of factors that differ from the situation in the United States. Here are some reasons. Centralized government authority. Both China and France have more centralized systems of government than the U.S., which has helped in decision-making and execution of such grand projects. In China, the authoritative government can execute large-scale projects without much bureaucratic or public resistance. France, similarly, has a centralized system where decision-making is much more streamlined compared to the federalist system in the U.S. Early adoption and commitment. France was an early adopter of high-speed rail technology with its TGV, Train et Grande Vitesse, system launched in 1981. The early success of the TGV demonstrated the technology's benefits, making it easier to secure both public and political support for further expansion. In contrast, the U.S. has no such successful model to point to. National Strategy in both countries, high-speed rail was viewed as part of a national strategy for economic development. In China, the rapid expansion of high-speed rail was part of the country's broader economic plan, backed by substantial government investment. France also viewed the TGV as part of a broader effort to modernize the nation's infrastructure. Urbanization Patterns Both China and France have population density and urbanization patterns that are more conducive to high-speed rail. High-speed rail is most efficient when cities are closely spaced, as is the case in much of France and the eastern half of China. The U.S., with its more spread-out geography and lower population density, lacks this advantage. Financial investment. Both China and France invested heavily in their rail networks. In China, the funding largely came from state-backed loans, while France utilized a combination of government subsidies and ticket revenues. Financial constraints were less of an issue in these countries compared to the U.S., where infrastructure projects often face funding challenges. Cultural factors. Both China and France have a history and culture of rail travel that is more favorable to the acceptance of high-speed rail. 
The U.S., by contrast, has a car-centric culture, making it harder to shift public opinion towards alternative modes of transportation. Environmental concerns. France and China were perhaps less hindered by environmental regulations compared to the U.S., where strict environmental assessments can delay projects. In China, particularly, the rapid pace of development has sometimes occurred with less public scrutiny over environmental impact. How Japan set the standard? Japan's Shinkansen, commonly known as the bullet train, is often considered the pioneer of high-speed rail. Introduced in 1964, the Shinkansen revolutionized train travel and set a global standard. There are several key factors that contributed to Japan's success in developing and implementing high-speed rail. Historical timing. The Shinkansen was introduced in time for the Tokyo Olympics in 1964. This provided both a deadline and a showcase for the technology, generating national and international attention. The project was seen as a symbol of Japan's recovery and modernization post-World War II. Centralized planning. Japan's government played a significant role in planning and implementing the Shinkansen, demonstrating a level of centralization similar to that of France and China. The Japanese National Railways, a state-owned entity at that time, oversaw the project. Population density and geography. Japan is characterized by its high population density and concentrated urban areas, especially along the eastern corridor between Tokyo and Osaka. This made high-speed rail particularly suitable as it could serve a large population within a small geographic area. Financial investment. Significant investment was made to ensure the project's success. While the initial costs were high, the Shinkansen quickly became profitable due to high demand, facilitating further expansion. Technological innovation. Japan invested heavily in research and development to overcome specific challenges, such as designing trains that could handle Japan's mountainous terrain and frequent earthquakes. This commitment to innovation helped set global standards for high-speed rail technology. Cultural attitudes. The Japanese culture values punctuality and efficiency, traits that are perfectly aligned with the concept of high-speed rail. Public acceptance of the Shinkansen was therefore relatively easy to achieve. Emphasis on safety. The Shinkansen has an unparalleled safety record, with zero passenger fatalities due to train accidents in its decades-long history. This commitment to safety has earned public trust and made it a preferred mode of transportation. Long-term vision. The Shinkansen was part of a long-term vision for Japan's infrastructure and economic development. Rather than being viewed as an isolated project, it was seen as an integral component of Japan's broader transportation network and economic system. Each of these factors contributed to the successful development and implementation of the Shinkansen, and many of them differ markedly from the conditions in the United States. Japan's experience illustrates how a combination of governmental will, favorable geography, technological innovation, and cultural readiness can facilitate the successful implementation of high-speed rail. We hope this video helped you gain some understanding of the challenges which the U.S. faces in building high-speed rail network. Thank you for watching.